So good evening, faculty, students, and our many interested friends. We are the Saatchi Chair in South African Art and Visual Culture, and the Department of Visual Art, Art at the University of Johannesburg are continuing our artists' conversations, honouring distinguished alumni, following Gordon Froud's exhibition of work by recipients of the Chancellor's Medal and Dignitas Awards. This evening, we welcome Claudia Hartwig to the third seminar of our series. Claudia Rivet Karnick, or Claudia Hartwig, as we first met her at UJ, is a collaborative printmaker who was awarded the Chancellor's Medal in 2012. Since then, she has worked at Artist Press Studios as a part-time lecturer in printmaking at UJ and has founded her own printing studio, Chocolate Inc. We are so pleased to host her this evening as she reflects on her art practice to date and discusses her many collaborative projects and her community engagement with Vedant, excuse me, with Vedant Lanakshant. Vedant is the immediate past head of Department of Visual Art at the University of Johannesburg. He lectured in printmaking and photography with a focus on human rights and citizenship. Until recently, he served as chairperson of the board of directors of Artist Proof Studio. So he has known Claudia for many years in a number of roles. Thank you so much to both of you for taking the time to share your experiences with us this evening. I'd like to hand it over then to the both of you. Before you start, I believe Claudia was our first gold medal winner. Am I correct, Kim? Yes. Absolutely. Awesome. Yes. So set a fine tradition for us. Thank you. Thank you. Um, okay, so Vedant, would you would you like to introduce yourself? Well, thank you, Claudia. Um, good afternoon, colleagues, students, and friends. Um, thank you very much to Sachi for this wonderful opportunity to um, join with you this evening to, to talk to Claudia about the phenomenal progress that she's made um, since graduating in 2012. Um, you know, as 2012 was a milestone year for the visual art department because Claudia achieved this outstanding result and it was the first of nine. Gordon, please correct me if I'm wrong. Um, ten, uh, in fact. Ten, yeah. thank you. Uh, ten Chancellor's Medals um, for Master's Research uh, awarded to graduates in the department and I want to acknowledge uh, Kim's role as the head of the program, master's program, and especially for stewardship in Claudia's research, and of course, colleagues in the department and the master's um, cohort, who throughout the years have contributed invaluable support to ensuring this kind of um, result. But this, today, we, we're here to learn more about what Claudia has achieved. And I want to start this discussion by first looking at a broad framework, um, you know, uh, in which we would ask Claudia to enlighten us about her work. And the both of us have agreed that the framework for this evening's uh, discussion is voice and citizenship. Um, derived from her master's catalog, um, and I think it embodies all the work that she has um, done throughout the years since leaving UJ, since completing her, her studies. Um, Voice and Citizenship looked at three specific themes, sub-themes, uh, and these are community engagement, active citizenship, and advocacy. Um, the nature of Claudia's research involved the community-based paradigm, research paradigm, um, and uh, with a special focus on art for social change. Uh, this is a, a program which Kim spearheads, and um, Claudia has uh, achieved phenomenally in this respect. So what we want to understand this evening, Claudia, is how did this begin? Tell us about your your journey in art before you embarked on formal studies. Okay, I'm going to screen share my, my little presentation um, so that we have a little bit of visual 
um, enjoyment while we're chatting. Uh, okay, um, let's see. Okay. All right, so um, I grew up in an art conscious household where we were encouraged to paint and draw. My parents have many books on art and um, the book to Albrecht Dürer was my firm favorite. I would often ask my father to explain how the artworks were made. Little did I know at that point that I was falling in love with printmaking. Um, in high school, my dear friend Stanley Parkies and I, we would dream of the day where we could use art as a way to help our communities find a voice for their issues or to find healing in the process. After school, I bumped into Stanley and he encouraged me to join him um, in tertiary studies at Fitz Technical. So, um, I studied fine art at Fitz Tech, where I first met Vedant on the day of the entrance exam. I was hopelessly lost and Vedant appeared and kindly guided me to where I was supposed to be. And during the very daunting interviews, Vedant sat across the table from me and had a reassuring glint in his eye and an encouraging smile on his face. My very first experience of printmaking was the day we were given a tour of our fine art building back in Musmeri Court. And as Vedant opened the double doors into the printmaking studio, I was completely mesmerized. The smell of ink and linseed oil combined with the exciting equipment before me struck a chord. And when I said to Vedant, what is this place? And he responded, this, my dear, is printmaking. I knew I had found my calling. Um, Vedant has been a constant guide, as well as my other lecturers, Kim, David, Murray Elder, who we miss, Gordon, and also all the care from Elder has helped me to thrive in my studies. I majored in printmaking for third and fourth year, and in fourth year I was lucky enough to be chosen as a mentor to teach graphic interpretation to all first years in the faculty as part of the foundation course. This is where my love of lino cut was really allowed to flourish as I got to interact with students from all of the other departments. And this is me being able to teach the students. Um, there you go. And look at all those smiles on everyone's faces. And this is what excited me so much is just how much the students enjoyed printmaking. For my experiential workplace learning project in fourth year, I worked together with Verdant to compile a calendar for UJ that featured a selection of prints produced during the Graphic Interpretation Foundation course. The subject for the project was for students to creatively interpret and speak about the Human Rights Advocacy print campaign. Once the final design had been okayed, I hand printed 20 silkscreen editions of these calendars, which were then presented to UJ as corporate gifts. I apologize for the quality of these photos, but they were taken on my very first cell phone back in 2006. Okay. Thank you, Claudia. And, you know, those were amazing photos of the factory, I see. Uh, <laughs> you were docker of hair and slightly leaner of frame. <laughs> yes. um, so how did you apply your learning since completing your BTEC degree? So just before graduating as a BTEC student, Professor Kim Berman offered me a job at Artist Proof Studio. Now, a dream of mine had been to study at APS after completing my studies at UJ. So I literally jumped at the opportunity and I had to pinch myself many times to accept that my dream had come true. My mission at Artist Proof Studio was to revive the unused silkscreen units and to focus on creating an environmentally friendly environment for clients, students and staff alike. At the time, there weren't any other functional silkscreen units that were collaborating with artists to produce fine art editioned prints. 
So this was a very exciting assignment for me. With Kim's constant assistance and the support from the staff, we started to produce edition screen prints. And at the same time, we initiated classes for the students in Silkscreen so that they could add it to their repertoire of skills. I was also honored to be able to host Silkscreen workshops for interested members of the community and to do live screen printing demonstrations at events and art fairs. And so my love for sharing my own knowledge with others thrived in my position at APS. So Artist Proof Studio is a phenomenal um, space insofar as printmaking is concerned in this country, and, and certainly it has a wide reputation overseas. Um, what value did you derive from your experience at, at APS? So during my time at APS, I really understood the need for each of us to be conscious of our own personal strengths and what we could contribute to our community and beyond. APS teaches one the value of community, the value of passing on knowledge and the value of awareness of social issues around us. Even though I no longer work at APS, I feel that I am guided by their values every day in my decisions and interactions with others. APS is my home away from home. I was also privileged enough to collaborate with so many wonderful artists in my time at APS. And here are a few of the prints that I assisted the artists to produce. I'm just going to show those so after four years of working at APS I began to feel a pressing need to write about silkscreen printing and how its application in our community has potential to give voice to citizens I began my master's research at UJ in 2010 with Professor Kim Berman as my supervisor and Vedant as my co-supervisor the title of my research the role of screen printing projects in enhancing an awareness of active citizenship, a case study at Artist Proof Studio, was based on the premise that the ideals and values which underpinned the struggle for liberation from apartheid appear to be a neglected legacy in a democratic South Africa. In order to address this deficit, I contended that it was necessary to regenerate notions of active citizenship within the community. My argument was that by reintroducing visual art based screen printing into an art center in Johannesburg, I would be able to communicate and inculcate aspects of active citizenship among the participants. I would be able to communicate um, so I approached my methodology by using aspects of Freirean philosophy of education and of participatory action research to inculcate an awareness of the medium of screen print and its capacity to, to disseminate values of equality, dignity, liberty and social justice. So thank you. So. Your, your research involved uh, quite an interesting methodology and it was certainly backed up by a um, uh, solid uh, theoretical uh, premise, premises. Um, you know, you, you looked at a, a, a Freirean outlook and you looked at service learning, you looked at democracy and, and citizenship. Um, enlighten us more about your, your master's research. How did this actually happen? How, how did it unfold? <laughs> so I'm sure you've seen some of the photos on the slideshow, but um, my research examined the role of screen print, which is a graphic medium, as an organizing tool for awareness and communication, but more specifically placed focus on the collaborative qualities of teaching screen printing in a learning environment, in this case, Artist Proof Studio. My master's study culminated in an MTech dissertation and an accompanying exhibition and catalog. The exhibition entitled Voice and Citizenship, a journey through screen printing was held at Artist Proof Studio 
and it demonstrated to the viewers and the community the journey that was undertaken by my participants and myself. The exhibition and catalogue served as visual evidence of personal growth and skills development within the participants as students at APS. Throughout this visual component of the master's study, one is able to see moments where the six of us were able to reflect on how personal growth and skills development occurred and how the results often reflected fragments of who we are and glimpses of who we could possibly become. As the conclusion of my catalog reads, the journey that the six of us have undertaken has served to strengthen our awareness of social and personal identity, which encompasses knowing what we are capable of and how each of us can contribute to our communities. This project has served to inculcate an essence of being, belonging and self-worth. The screen printed artworks display evidence of developing conceptual and technical proficiency that supports my belief that these five students have promising and valuable art careers ahead of them. I conclude this catalogue with thanks to everyone involved for all of the support, love and patience. So these are the, the five participants um, and thanks to social media, I've been able to keep a close eye on the five young artists and they have done just that. They really have focused on their art careers and on creating awareness within their communities. Sadly, one of the participants passed away, which has been such a loss to the community and we miss him and remember him fondly. As a part-time lecturer at UJ teaching printmaking, I was overjoyed to read about two of these artists in the essays I've asked my second year printmaking students to write this year. Um, and this is some snapshots I've taken from social media of the participants today and you can see they all are continuing in their practice as artists and making a difference in the community. Um, receiving the first Arch Chancellor's Medal for the faculty was most certainly a surprise that I could not have expected and I feel that this medal deserves to be shared between the three of us, Professor Kim Bedant and myself so I insisted on um, this special photograph to be taken as I feel that my master's research was really a labor of love between the three of us. And I cannot thank both Kim and Vedant enough for understanding the thoughts brewing in my head and for allowing me to base my study on them. Thank you, Claudia. Uh, we certainly appreciate those sentiments. But I think um, going back to the, the gist of what you achieve, um, you know, it, it reinforces the point about how art can lead to social change um, because some of the, the students at APS that you worked with um, have since gone on to form their own collectives. And, and your work has even spurred further research or, or you know, uh, in, in, in the department and it's reinforced the idea of uh, art for social change. You know, other students uh, are getting involved or have got involved with uh, art that is based in, in, in that direction and certainly master students as well. What did you do after completing your master's? So, after the completion of my master's, I was approached by Norman Catherine, who offered to donate all of his silk screen equipment to me, as he had become aware of how much I enjoyed screen printing. And with Kim's blessing and my father's kindness, I was able to open Chocolate Ink Studio in Maboning, where I continued to collaborate with artists and screen print, as well as other techniques that I could assist them with. Here, I was also able to host my own small workshops with interested artists, members of the public and schools. Usha C. Jaram brought such an energetic and comical bunch of little budding printmakers to my space, and we somehow made them all fit in with lots of laughs and some frayed nerves, which you'll see 
in the photos coming up. Um, Okay, so here's the, the workshops, and we had no idea how we were going to fit, I think it was 20 students plus facilitators into the space. Um, but the result was some wonderful little color graphs that the students made, and they were very impressed with printmaking. So after this first experience of being able to fit so many people into my space, I was able to host more school workshops, children's workshops, matric students who are creating screen prints for their matric portfolios, and even some master's students who are wanting to delve into the mystery and magic of printmaking. Chocolate Ink Studio had its home in Maboning for three years, and then due to some financial constraints, I had to move my studio closer to home, where my father allowed me to move my studio into a double story flat on his property. This introduced clients um, to the idea of a suburban studio situated in amongst a beautiful garden, safer parking and a quieter environment, which proved to be a good space for the mind of artists who are trying to focus on a difficult technique like screen printing. I had students from Inkscape College coming to visit and one remark was that they appreciated that it was possible to have a professional space in a home environment as a larger studio space outside of home was not within their financial reach. Just some photographs from the studio and the garden. Um, four years ago, I once again moved my studio, but this time to a space just down the road into what would become my own home. Most of the property is dedicated to the studio and my workshops are flourishing and my studio is hardly ever without an artist or a UJ student in it. Um, as you can see from the slideshow, I am very privileged to be able to teach um, students in my space as well. So I've been able to work with so many inspiring artists at Chocolate Ink Studio, and a large part of my work ethic is to provide a space for experimentation in printmaking. So often I will see, I will receive an email from an artist who wants to try something not often done. To date, I've printed with 90% pure gold pigment, 100% pure crushed Afghan lapis lazuli, human ashes, and even experiments with verdigris. We have exposed tree stumps and weaved frames onto screens, and the results have been surprising and spectacular. And you'll see in the slide, the, when I'm mixing the lapis lazuli into a printing medium, how it just sits on top and it's quite delicious to look at. Um, and just some, here's Michael Bucker's work and I got to screen print onto glass for her. She knows. Peter Mammoth, um, he loved experimenting. So none of, your, none of the photographs are showing. Oh, we're still no. on the very first. we still on the very first artist proof workshop. Oh None of them goodness. have been showing. Uh, Sorry, um, Kim. I texted we're, you. We're all uh, getting in. We're seeing oh, it. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Are we seeing Sorry. them. And go back. Okay, Kim. Okay. I can also email you the PowerPoint presentation. No, sorry. Sorry to interrupt. Okay. No problem. No problem. So the artist Peter Mum has really loved experimenting with screen prints. So I did a lot of print reverse printing onto glass for him. Um, the image on the bottom left of the skull is printed in human ashes. Um, and on the far bottom left, we screen printed onto metal and then etched it and silver plated it. Um, and then Dirk, and um, for Nelson, my husband Sebastian and I collaborate with Nelson to produce some really nice portfolios. Um, okay, so this is just a, a sort of a summary. And then a very big privilege for me was um, that I was approached by the Nelson Mandela Museum in Howick, and they wanted me to reproduce the resistance posters for them so that they could put um, replicas into the museum. 
And this, this was absolutely incredible because I had the originals exhibited at my exhibition for the masters. Okay, and then as you can see, I also edition lino cuts and etchings and woodcuts for artists. Um, and then, yes, artists really do get into, into their work in my space, and I really enjoy seeing how the artists work. This is a particularly stunning series um, printed together with Marion Hester onto copper. Uh, and then I was even privileged enough to work with Gillian Ross, who is the or was the master printer from David Crutz Studio. Okay, um, I've also had the privilege of collaborating with South Atlantic Press in Cape Town um, for Georgina Behrens. And this was a project directed and printed for Dan Halter. And I've also hosted David Crutz master printers, Roxy Kaczmarek and Sarah Judge in my space while they printed very, very large screen prints for my uh, Malievic. So needless to say, I've never really had a dull moment in my living space, and my home always smells of the glorious linseed oil and inks. What a pleasure. With the COVID pandemic, I almost feel guilty to say that my professional life did not change much as I was in lockdown in my very own studio. Claudia, on this point, um, I want to take you back a bit. Now, Artist Proof Studio places equal emphasis on process, on the nature of collaborating with professional printers and with established artists, so that students there at the, at the studio um, get to understand firsthand, um, you know, how, how printmaking is, is, um, uh, unfolds. What were some of the challenges that you faced when working with uh, artists in your studio? Um, I'm sorry, I think for Dante that my connection got interrupted, so I didn't hear the last part of your question. Oh, okay. So, you know, you've, you've enlightened us about your work with uh, professional artists and printmakers. Um, what were some of the challenges that you faced? Can you hear hear me? Yes, I can. Some of the challenges that I face. Um, I think in the beginning when I work with an artist, it's, it's the fact that I need to understand the artist to almost get to know them. Um, and once we start creating a rapport between the two of us, once we have a relationship, we start to trust each other. So very often, um, in the beginning, an artist needs to build up that trust in me to understand that I'm there to problem solve the project. Um, especially with being an experimental printmaker, I sometimes have to do a few tests before we reach a result that the artist does like. And I wouldn't call it problems as such, but just little um, little hiccups or little hills that we have to climb over just so that we can get to the comfortable space where we work together perfectly in the studio. Um, and during COVID, in the beginning, I was concerned that it would pose a problem to the work. But what has happened is because we've got this online community, we started artists and I started meeting via Zoom. So we could still feel like we were meeting together um and being able to print like i said in my own home studio i was actually able to continue to work as i did before COVID. thank you thank you um i'm i'm aware that we are pressed for time um i want to take you in a slightly different direction now um and and this is about your your teaching at uj um, you, you have first and second year students that you deal with, these undergraduate uh, programs, uh, students in the undergraduate programs. How have you been able to channel your focus on citizenship and advocacy um, with students? Can you tell us more about that? Hmm. So yeah, being a part-time lecturer at UJ teaching printmaking, 
firstly, the COVID pandemic did bring about some challenges, which took time adjusting to. Um, so even though I could teach the theory of printmaking to my students, printmaking is obviously a hands-on technique. And like you say, because I like to be involved in the community, um, we sort of had to find a way around that. So I would end up teaching students how to create color separations um, in Photoshop, and I would take these blurry videos on my phone while holding the squeegee in one hand and printing. Um, but the thing is, teaching at UJ is really an important way for me to give to my immediate community. And it's also a way to instill a passion for printmaking from the very get go. So I approach teaching printmaking at UJ very much from the student's perspective where I'm always trying to be aware that most students have never done printmaking before. And even though it's a natural way of life for me, I cannot expect everyone to have the same passion. So yes, students are overwhelmed by all the technical processes. Um, and therefore, I encourage you to ask questions. I, I encourage you to repeat questions until the students feel comfortable and they understand also the conceptual underpinning of the printmaking projects that they are working on. And how else have you expanded knowledge of citizenship and voice in, in the community? Um, well, one of the things that brings me the greatest joy is to be involved in community projects and to be able to give back. So over the years, as a UJ student, Kim has provided me with the opportunity to be involved in outreach programs, such as the Paper Press project conducted at the Pumani Paper Mill. So in my BTEC year, I joined the Pumani Paper project by visiting the satellite branches of the Paper Mill and took part in workshops aimed at giving voice to the community through participatory action research visual methods such as photo voice and paper press. Paper press is a very, very important um, medium or technique that I learned at Artist Proof Studio. It's an art related intervention using printing methods. The concept of creating a printed prayer or message for someone important to you comes from the Japanese custom of offering painted strips of paper as prayers for healing. This tradition has been adapted and has become a gesture of hope and goodwill for people infected by HIV and AIDS. The paper prayers process gives participants the opportunity to respond positively and creatively to the HIV AIDS pandemic. And as such, it is another form of developing citizenship or civic responsibility. Then to continue, during my master's study, I was invited to um, join the collaboration with the UJ Sociology Department and Chulu Trust towards a community engagement project in the village of Hamakuya in Venda. Here we conducted HIV AIDS workshops that target various groups of people um, including home-based caregivers, foster parents, high school and primary school children as a means of raising awareness and educating them about the implications of HIV and AIDS, Bulhazia and TB. Art-based methods such as paper prayers, which you see in the slide, helped the participants to enhance creativity and to also experience emotional healing. So, and these are just the wonderful pictures of all the groups. Um, and they were so, so proud of the artworks that they created. We also uh, took part in a homestay in Vendor to um, understand the, the cultural differences and the way of life. Um, in 2010, I participated in a community engagement conference in East London, where I was able to present my master's study alongside Muzi Nklapo, who was there to represent the research project in Hamakuya. Now, my most exciting community project to date, in 2016, I was invited by Usha Sijaram to assist her in a community-based project in the small town of Hanover in the Karoo. There we taught screen printing to interested members of the community in an effort to not only encourage entrepreneurial skills and forms of income, but also to show the members of the community how screen print posters could act as a form of advocacy 
for the community. So a very interesting thing happened during this workshop. Our little workshop room was broken into and some of our screen print supplies were stolen. And as a reaction to this, our group of participants used their newly acquired skills to print wanted posters that they stuck up all over the community. I would be lying if I said I didn't have a few tears of pride in my eyes. So teaching my skills to communities and helping them to become active citizens through art is really at the core of who I strive to become every day. Thank you, and I'm sure, thank you, Claudia, and I'm sure that, uh, you know, we could talk at length at each of the projects that you were engaged in. Now, on a, in, a, in a slightly different direction, um, I want to ask about TPG. And TPG is an integral, well, is integral to who you are. What is TPG and, mm -hmm. and how has it influenced you? So in 2017, I was approached by Amy Jane Vandenberg to take part in a group show at the Fringe Festival in Victoria Yards. And this was where I was first introduced to the Printing Girls, otherwise known as TPG. The Printing Girls is a strong professional network of female South African printmakers co-founded by Amy Jane and Carmen Ford. In 2018, I was invited to join the admin team behind the collective and I found myself in the position of the technical and workshop manager. Now, for me, that again is a dream come true. What an incredible title to have. Through the Printing Girls, I am able to reach a network of artists whose focus is on a specific community and the sharing of knowledge within that community. I am able to teach workshop after workshop based on the techniques that I specialize in. And I'm given a platform to do live demonstrations of printmaking at gallery openings, events, and wine and print evenings. As a member of TPG, um, I also produce my own artworks, which focus on awareness of the natural environment and all that exists within the cycle. Because I enjoy all the printmaking techniques I have access to, I also choose to create my body of work using the variety of skills I have. Um, an interesting fact is that when I joined TPG, there were 15 members, and now here we are in 2022 with a whopping group of 84 members of an all-encompassing demographic situated all over South Africa and we even have three expats who are based in the UK. TPG has also forged international links with companies such as Speedball and also um, the world-renowned podcast Hello Print Friend, hosted by Miranda Keeland. Fascinating. Thank you, Claudia. Um, now, given the disparities in wealth in, in South Africa, can you hear me? I can, yes. Given the disparities in wealth in, in South Africa, how would you make printmaking more accessible to foster awareness in society? Well, I think my, my immediate plan of action is that uh, I'd like to initiate some traveling printmaking workshops where I can use the concept of voice and citizenship with reference to the paper press, and then look at how they encourage awareness and a way of expressing concerns within the community. These workshops could address the Bill of Rights with focus on gender-based violence, xenophobia and environmental awareness, and also making the communities aware that printmaking doesn't have to be an elitist art form that requires extensive material and resources. So, in other words, you you want to demystify printmaking? Very much so. Yes. Okay. Um, I'm sorry that we might be a bit pressed for time, but we would love to have um, looked at your personal work. Um, do you want to look at just one and and talk to us about uh, where where your current focus is in terms of your printmaking? 
Okay, let me just open the screen share again. Um, okay, so for my personal work at the moment, um, like I said, I'm focusing very much on the awareness of the environment um, and of the life around me. So I've, I'm making bodies. Of, so you will have seen this uh, artwork on the, the right hand side that was at the exhibition that Gordon curated. Um, and I think I really enjoy looking at the, the intricate details and the delicacy of the environment around us. And I try to create that awareness of, of the life around us because I think very often people overlook the small beauties um, that we're surrounded by and we need to appreciate what we what we have around us. So um, these are the examples I have of the body of work that I've, I've got at the moment. Um, and as you can see, they, they're all different techniques. This, this slide page is cyanotype and in the middle and the two outer artworks are silkscreen. Um, the previous page, it's reduction, lino cut, silk screen, color graph, um, gel plate printing, and the previous one is lino cut. Fascinating, Claudia. This has been an amazing uh, trajectory, tra trajectory um, of your work since graduating, and uh, it certainly holds out for. Uh, you know, more engaged work in the fields of environmental justice and climate change uh, in this age of globalization. It has been a pleasure um, catching up with you and looking at your work uh, over the past few years, and we wish you every success in your work in, in the future. Thank you very much, and I now um, hand it back to Irene for discussion. Thank you so much, Claudio. Thank you for that. I think we've discovered um, the mastermind behind, you know, many uh, well-known South Africans contemporary print printing work. I think we've seen a lot of names we we, we are familiar with pop up in your your collaborative projects and certainly I, I recognize at least a few uh, artists and students from from your images. So thank you so much. And I wonder if perhaps some of those collaborators or students might like to say hello. Also your, your past lecturers might like to say hi and uh, possibly um, inviting questions now for Claudia. There are some there are some questions, uh, some comments in the chat. Uh, Gordon had to leave if you can see Claudia and he says so proud of you and what you have achieved. And Mandy also says, wonderful, Claudia. So good to hear of your earlier journey. Mm -hmm. And here's Kim. So do pop up on screen and, and open up your microphone and camera if you'd like to say hi or ask something. So I'm, I'm popping up on screen also just to say how proud we are of Claudia. I think I think Vedant and I called, called ourselves her academic mom and dad, and it's really wonderful to see what you've managed to do and thank you for a great conversation and a lovely presentation. Well, thank you for making this possible, Kim, really. It's, uh, you know, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, Kim, I was going to say it was a nice family photograph that we saw. <laughs> <laughs> I do love that photograph very much. Yeah, unfortunately, I missed all the all the images, but I'll I'll have to get another okay, time. I'm on my phone. So. Kim, I'll email the PowerPoint presentation to you. Thanks. Hey, Claudia, I just want to say well done. Thank you. That was so wonderful to hear what you had to say. And um, I taught you sculpture briefly, um, and and you also a sculptor. So um, looking forward I'm, I'm to seeing I'm sorry I don't have any photographs of you, Elsie, but you also had a big impact on me, both you and Shannon in, in first year. So um, you're all part of my family. Yeah, we love you so much at Artist Proof Studio. Cool. 
Thanks so much. That was wonderful. <laughs> Thank you. Can I go? Um, Claudia, that was it's Philippa here. That was very inspiring. Um, lovely to hear. I kept asking myself the, um, you know, out of a range of possible printmaking processes that you could have chosen, you chose screen printing. I'm sure you must have had so many thoughts about this. Was it because of uh, the uh, perhaps the immediacy and the speed at which one can produce an image? You know, basically a pull every few seconds if you if you set up and running. Or was it because screen printing has this historic association with protest and underground um, production? Or is there something I'm not aware of that, that drew you to it? Um, it's definitely the second part. It's the legacy of screen printed yeah. posters. Um, and it just, it really, really caught my eye and um, you know, it actually made me quite emotional to be aware of the fact that screen printed posters had so much power during um, the, liber the, the struggle for liberation. Yes. And what I love telling people is if you, um, obviously, you know all of the history with Tami Mneli and Medu. Yes, but I'm thinking you know of Gaborone, yeah. <laughs> exactly. How yeah. in the evenings, all of these posters would be put up all over the place. Yeah. In the mornings, people would wake up. Yeah. They would see these um, messages of encouragement, messages of hope. Then the police would come, tear all the posters down, yep. and the next evening, all the posters would be back yeah. up. And I think that there is something intrinsically so valuable about that, that I think, for me as a whole, most printmaking, you know, you can very quickly print. If you if you do a line of cut, you can also print yes. quite quickly. But screen printing is... Uh, portable and you can create so many colors so quickly so that also creates an awareness if you have a nice bright poster um, but i think there's a there could be another thing as well now that i come to think about it what about the energy and the acrobatics that go into that kind of almost forceful dragging of the squeegee yeah. is there something very concerted about it something very determined about it is it a statement in itself do you think I, I have to agree with you i really like what you've brought up and yes it is that energy this and the mm. noise and and the way it snaps yes. off and you know it's yes it's very yeah. addictive yeah I agree with you, and that um, that sense of mastery and management of 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 this uh, bunch of ink on on the screen as well. Yes. <laughs> and the haste to do it before it all dries. Oh my goodness! Yes, yes, that hasn't changed. <laughs> <laughs> no, I really loved this. Um, well done, Muzzle Thank you so much. So Thank inspiring. You. Something new. Thank you. David, I see your hands up. Would you? Ah, here we go. Hi, Claudia. Hi. Congratulations. Thank you, sir. It's it's <laughs> it's so wonderful to uh, to chat to you and for you to share your journey in its in its multiple forms. And of course, as a as a screen printer myself, it's fantastic to be able to have shared some of my equipment and I see um, the, the sister screen more bed in your studio and now the screen more bed in the in the department and I'm just very pleased that the department can have somebody like you to show the students how to get the best out of that that machine and uh, to get it to sing but uh, there's there's something else, and that was just to remind the community, although I came late, you've probably already um, stated this for Dunt and uh, Irene, that uh, Claudio, you were our very first Chancellor's Medal winner. And in many ways, I think you blazed a trail for not just the students to come, the nine students who got medals after you, but also I think I need to acknowledge that you grew a faith in the staff and in the department that 
the research which we innately believed in and the quality of the research which was produced by you and and master students at the time um, had a, an efficacy and, and a gravitas and a, a recognition in the Chancellor's Medal. And you being the first one, you, you blazed that trail. And, and I think that that is something that we, we really look back on as a, a, a real watershed moment for us as, as staff and, and uh, as a department. So I wanted to congratulate you once again and just acknowledge how important your research and what you brought to the department was at that time. Thank, thank you very much, sir. Um, and uh, yeah, if you missed the first part, also I acknowledge um, your contribution to my growth in, in the department. You were the head of department when I first joined first year. And I must say the the energy and the vigor that you approached all of our classes with was inspiring. A little bit scary at times, but very, very inspiring. Um, and your screen prints in the staff room, really, I think they planted a seed. And I was so curious about how you had made those beautiful artworks. So thank you for, for that as well. Mandy, you're welcome to go ahead. I see you have a hand up. Thank you. Hi, Klaus. Hello. How Hi. are you? Yeah, welcome good evening. All the way from the UK. And, uh, I just want, I've just been so interested in listening to, to your whole story. And um, I think there's so many aspects to your life that your academic colleagues possibly aren't aware of. And um, and that is how you've turned into also an amazing curator of, of other people's work um, and your skills in documenting and, and record keeping, which are so important in, in printmaking ethics. Um, so I think that's really an important thing that you have embraced really well and, and introduced into your own studio. So I just wanted to really mention that. And also I was interested what Philip was saying about why you were pulled by um, screen print and just having seen you working over the last few years and your complete focus on detail, I think screen print really allows that layering and layering and layering of detail, uh, which really reflects your life as well. So I just wanted to make those comments. Oh, thank you, Mandy. Um, for those of you that don't know Mandy, she is also one of my mentors. So after graduating, Mandy sort of picked up the bat and, and has been guiding me where I need guidance. And yeah, she's just really helped me build up confidence in my own skill. So thank you, Mandy. Claudia, would you like to say something very briefly about um, the curating that Mandy alluded to? Um, well, so, so I wanted to include it in my actual um, discussion, but I was adding too much detail. But I, I've been very lucky to assist Mandy with her gallery. So it's um, out of the cube. It's an online gallery and every year she exhibited at Turbine Art Fair um, and also at the Fine Art Print Fairs. So I was able to assist her there. Um, and then also just in terms of the admin um, having to be done at the printing girls, um, obviously there's a lot of admin behind exhibitions and having prints um, arriving from all over South Africa. So three to four prints per artist. And last year we had uh, 58 artists. So it's a lot of prints arriving at my studio. Um, and Mandy has been teaching me how to do consignment notes and how to record everything properly, keep the prints safe and exhibit them and return them back to artists after the show. 
it's been a real learning experience um, and understanding how galleries work with prints as well. So um, yes, that's a, another side of, of what I do and it's quite an eye opener. <laughs> I think you have quite a fostering role in uh, we, we've heard this again and again this evening, how you've inspired, you know, you know the Dover department members, how you've paid it forward with uh, you know, the young artists, with students. Uh, so, so while uh, you might have might credit uh, Kim and Vedant as your printmaking academic parents, it sounds like you are also um, in, in you are you are yourself becoming a printmaking parent in turn. That's the dream. <laughs> I, I see there are perhaps a few more comments for you. Uh, Alex Halligi, she's one of our um, associate research postdocs. Uh, she says, Claudia, thank you. I found it so moving to hear about your work. And I'm sure that sentiment is echoed by many others. Ah, oh, here's Alex. Uh, hi, Claudia. Sorry, I don't have, it's outside of my technical expertise, so I don't have anything kind of more depth to offer, but just the way you're working and the beauty with which you talk about the printmaking is just really lovely and Thank not you. really moving. Thank you so, so much. That really means a lot. Thank you. A pleasure. Do we perhaps have any other questions or comments for Claudia? Mine is just a comment to thank Claudia for a very inspiring conversation thank and to say how much I enjoyed it. So thank you so much for being with us. Yeah, thank you for the invitation. I really appreciate it. I see thank we you, have Claudia. one. Well, well, perhaps, um, you know, Angelique, uh, she says, hi, Clouds. Thanks for the wonderful presentation. You have planted the seed for my love for screen printing. Absolutely love working in your studio. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Angelique. Uh, no, you bring me to tears here. <laughs> Thank you. So I think perhaps unless we have um, any other final comments or um, questions, We'll say thank you to Claudia and to Vedant as well. Thank you for such a wonderful presentation. I think you've given us all some inspiration and um, reflection. We're going to go out and reach out to those around us, I think. Thank you. That's that's wonderful news. <laughs> um, yeah, thank you to everyone who's, who's helped me to get to where I am now. Um, and Irene, thank you for all of your help for preparing for this seminar. Not at all. I just, I just allowed you to shine, which I think we might, um, perhaps you yourself might not always allow yourself to, to stand and shine as bright as you do, because while there are many people around you, you yourself um, have been an important, you know, you, you are, and we would like to honour you this evening. Thank you.